In today's show, we're looking ahead to Thursday's action in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. We are here to look ahead to Thursday's action in the league. Let's do that right now. First game we're taking a look at is the Mavs and the Pistons. Of course, Dallas is listing everybody as questionable as they seemingly do every game for this week. So we don't know exactly who's going to play. You've got Doncic, you've got Porzingis, you've got Finney Smith, who's on that list. Josh Richardson's on that list. The only guy that, or JJ Reddick's on that list. We've got, no, we know that Maxi Kleber's playing, but there could be a lot changing. Now, Finney Smith has played in both of the two games that he's been questionable in already. So has Doncic. So let's see what Dorian can do. He's, he's playing at a really high level. Now, Trey Burke started last game in place of Josh Richardson. Put up good defensive numbers, but couldn't hit shots. The game before that, he came off the bench, but started the second half and hit every shot in the world. He is a tough one to get a a read on. How they use him, and they're using him more than Tim Hardaway and Jalen Brunson in the last two games. I don't really believe that's sustainable, but it's what's happening at the moment, so we need to pay attention to it. For the Pistons, it is that three-game week, but of course, in the middle of a very light week, they have to rest Corey Joseph, Wayne Ellington, and Mason Plumlee. That's so that when they do play, that, that Dwayne Casey can prioritize them over the young guys, you know, Of course, all logic uh, is out the window. But this means that with Joseph and uh, Plumlee and Allington out, we're going to get a lot of Killian Hayes. And we're going to get a lot of Alf Stewart. The Flaming Mongrel should start at center and get 30-plus minutes. I'm really excited to see what Isaiah Stewart does. And then I hope we get 30-plus out of Killian Hayes. We should. The last time he started, he played 31 and 33 minutes. So this should be 30-plus from Killian, who's looking... He's not there yet, anywhere near it. He's nowhere near being a good NBA player at this point. But he's looking good. He's looking better. And we're seeing him develop in that role. And that's why it makes absolutely no sense when we see him play 18 minutes behind Corey Joseph. Let's go on to the next one. The Nets and the Pacers. Jeff Green, will he start at center again? My name is Jeff. Uh, He has. He did in the last game and DeAndre Jordan was out of the rotation. I think there's a chance with considering the Pacers aren't or well, they're not going to have DeMontis Sabonis, and they're not going to have Miles Turner. They might have Gogo. We don't know yet. Um, there is a chance for Green to start again at center. Well, Landry Shamet should get another start now with Durant and Irving there. He just doesn't touch the ball, and that obviously impacts his numbers. But will he still get that large role as a starter? Well, for the Pacers, we know O'Shea Brissett has been putting up really good numbers. It's helping him with Sabonis and Badadze out. Now, if Gogo plays, I'd be very interested to see how much Brissett plays at center. He played like 20-plus minutes there last game with Samson in foul trouble. Um, I still think Brissett is going to be able to remain a starter on this squad, whether that's as a 28-minute-a-night guy or a 38-minute-a-night guy does remain to be seen, but his role is uh, is very interesting to watch. And same as Edmund Sumner, who I do think also will remain a starter for this Pacers team. Now, he was absolutely dreadful in their loss to Portland last game. I think he can be better than that, and I think he can have some level of 12-team league value. Tower has a lot of value, though, and that is rockauto.com. If you're looking for parts for your car or truck, rockauto.com is the place that you need to go. Why would you go to a chain store that has different price tiers for professional mechanics and do-it-yourselfers? Rockauto.com's prices, they're the same for everybody, and they're reliably low, always offering the lowest prices possible rather than charging changing prices based on what the market will bear like airlines do. Rockauto.com is for everybody and does not require membership or account login. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. The catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate, so you can quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices that you prefer. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Okay, let's go on to this, uh, this next game. Of the day now, we're looking at the Bucks and the Rockets. Is this an opportunity for Milwaukee to rest everybody? I think it's a real possibility. They've got three games in four nights to end the week. So keep an eye on Punch Bob, where the Yanni sits and Porters, and because it's against the Rockets, where the Porters can get in there and start. And then watch for Bryn Forbes as well, who we know is up and down and generally provides nothing more than threes and scoring. But if he plays 30 minutes, there could be enough threes and scoring there to make a difference. 
for the Rockets. Kenyon Martin Jr. is impressing at the moment. We're not going to have Eric Gordon. We're not going to have DJ Augustin. We're going to have... Um, so Martin's still going to have that you know, 20 plus minute a night role, playing some backup three, backup four, maybe even backup five at times. Uh, Sterling Brown remains sidelined as well. So there is an opportunity and more minutes could come because Daniel House and Avery Bradley are both questionable. So we want to see what Martin looks like. And then Kelly Olenek, who's been, let's be honest, the Rockets' best player over the last couple of weeks. What are his minutes going to look like? Will he remain starting uh, all season? I would have to assume that he does. And the minutes for him look pretty juicy. The Warriors and the Wolves, Kent Bazemore has returned. So does he move straight into that starting spot ahead of Michael Mulder? That's where he was before. And then what does that mean for Cali Oubre's minutes, who, whose minutes were pretty shit house? And he was, he was obviously pretty shit house last game as well. But when Bazemore and Lee went down, we saw Oubre's numbers step back up. Bazemore can be a very interesting steals type stream option. Well, Juan Toscano Anderson's playing pretty well. They're going to have no triangle Eric Pascal in this one too. So 20 plus for Toscano Anderson seems like it's going to happen. And that can have some deep league appeal. For the Wolves, let's watch Goose, Anthony Edwards. Um... We know he's going to take a lot of shots. We know he's going to miss a lot of shots, but he's adding blocks. He's adding steals. He's adding some defense, some rebounding stats as well. And he's contributing right across the board with some good numbers. So I don't expect too much to change in what he does. And then also Rick Rubio, who was playing 27 a night, but the last three or four, he's down to like 21, 22. And at 21, 22, he becomes nothing more than an assist streamer. But this is a low volume day. There's six games on. So is there enough value in Rubio there to stream him in if you are desperate for assists? Potentially. Next game, Rap Raptors and Nuggets. The Raptors did not rest anybody in their first back-to-back. -back. This is their Thursday game, then they got a back-to-back -back on Saturday, Sunday. What do they do with Malachi Flynn? I imagine they just play him 20-plus minutes. I'm a little bit worried about Fred Van Vliet. He does not look right at all, and I think he is almost definitely going to sit one or two of these games. I could be very wrong, like I was wrong at the start of this week. But just watching him and hearing him speak, Fred, how do you feel? I feel like shit. That's not a great thing to say. And that's definitely not a great indication that he's going to play three games in four nights. So Flynn is going to be an option here. Well, Ken Birch, I think, is going to start all these games. He's going to play some good minutes. The wiki Chris Boucher remains sidelined. And I don't think we see Boucher this season, to be honest. So Birch has some pretty good value. While the Nuggets, they are on a back-to-back. -back. PJ Dozier can be up and down. We know that. But his ability to play minutes, generate rebounds, get defensive stats, makes him a useful option. While Aaron Gordon, we know that it's been frustrating dealing with his minutes. And anytime they have an opportunity to sit him, they seemingly do. But he is, he is in a situation here with the injuries that he can get a little bit more ball handle, a little bit more playmaking, and a little bit more usage. So let's see if he can turn it up a little bit in this one. Next game is the Pelicans and the Thunder. I just want to watch Kyra Lewis Jr. because I do believe that he can become an NBA caliber starter next season. Whether he does or not is uh, is up in the air and, and remains remains to be seen. But I think there is a possibility that he could get to that level. Um, but yeah, again, we're, we're still... We're still waiting to see whether that's going to be uh, that's going to be the case and how that's all going to uh, how that's all going to play out. But um, we do want to. I want to watch him because I just I, I I've given up hope that we're going to see him supplant Eric Bledsoe. But I just want to see him perform well in his role coming off the bench. And of course, I always want to watch Zion Williamson, who's going to be yeah, a guy that's draft position is going to be very intriguing heading into next season where he goes second round, most likely, I think would be my guess. But again, there's there's a lot to work out there, and we just hope we can get consistency from him from the free throws. For the Thunder, Isaiah Roby being the best performing player out of their big men, um, I think he's a must-roster guy, so I want to see what he does. And then also Ty Jerome, who is outplaying the Salt Flake, Theo Maladon, as that backup point guard, getting good minutes, scoring well, hitting some threes, and has some stream value on a day like today, or like Thursday. In terms of streams, the category leagues, we're looking at Bazemore, Kavon Looney, Jordan Poole. Three Warriors guys with some good stream value. I like Killian Hayes. I like Ty Jerome. Yeah, guys like Roby, they should be rostered anyway. But if they're not, you go and add him and, and Darius Baisley, players like that. For points leagues, we're looking at Bazemore, Joshy Jackson, Ken Birch, PJ Doja, and Faku Kampazzo. That'll do it for me today. Don't forget, follow along, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. While on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.